Moses joining me on the desk. Now, anyone craving some playoff action, some, you know, hockey playoff action, they're, they're in for a treat. Baker Hughes Bobcats yep. tonight at the Civic Center looking for some redemption. Of course, uh, game two of their divisional final series against SSAC. And Matt Schumann has a great story for us here. Now, after losing the first game, it was pretty much a, a tough loss for them in overtime. The Cats still feel they're confident they could beat the Dodge Division's number one seed. It's not the way the Bobcats were looking to open up the Dodge Division final. In hostile territory, the Cats weren't able to find any overtime magic, dropping game one, two to one in double overtime. Overall, we, we put in a good effort. It was a tight game, uh, chances back and forth. Uh, not a lot of great chances basically throughout the whole game, and unfortunately, we lost in overtime. I think we outplayed them, outshot them. They had a good goalie. You know, we had a couple opportunities we could capitalize on, should have, and uh, they got a good bounce at the end there and capitalize on it. Penalties have been an issue for the Border City Bunch, averaging five a game in the postseason. Despite all the penalties, head coach Cole Fisher has in mind his team's aggressive play. We want to play a, a physical style of game and, and get on teams and you know most of our penalties last game were, were uh, you know boarding or hit to the head where we're finishing checks and playing physical and and most of the time we'll kill those off. We need to be disciplined and uh, keep the penalty, penalties to a minimum but we just gotta keep working hard moving our feet and just not put our sticks in those positions. The Bobcats have also ran into a hot goalie. SSA sees Jordan Papperty supporting a 1.47 goals against average and a 9.50 save percentage and has allowed only one goal in his last 12 periods. However, the Cats say if they stay the course, the goals will start going in. We don't score a lot of goals as it is, but it's kind of our motto. You just got to get traffic in front and shoot everything and drive the net hard. And hopefully get a lot of greasy goals. We're going to have to get some more traffic to the net, get some guys going to the dirty areas and... Uh... Get some guys standing in front, you know, and not be scared to uh, get hit with a puck. Puck draw for tonight's game is at 7 o'clock at the Civic. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports. Thanks a lot, Matt. Let's still stick with hockey, the AJHL variety. After two tight games in Bonneville, which saw the Pontiacs only score three goals, their offense exploded for nine the following two contests in Drayton Valley en route to a series win. As Clayton Brown explains, the second round is now set and Bonneville will be facing a high-scoring white court Wolverine team. They're two teams with polar opposite styles of play, but only three points stood between Bonneville and White Court in the regular season standings. Very little separated the two teams in the six games against each other, and it all adds up to what should be an extremely tight series. You know, I think you're right when you say both teams are a little bit of a contrast of each other in the styles of play and what they bring to the table, and I think it's going to make for a very interesting matchup. We're expecting them to come out hard for sure. They're, they're going to give us their best, and uh, we expect them. We hope that's it's going to be a great series. Goals were hard to come by for the Pontiacs at times this season, but their offense came to life in games three and four in Drayton Valley, lighting the lamp nine times. I feel that uh, depth plays a big role in the uh, playoff run. you got to have contributions from everybody, and uh, we got that against Drayton Valley, which is what we're going to need going forward. Bonneville held the Thunder to only five goals in the entire series, but the defense will have a much tougher test against Whitecourt, the second highest scoring team in the AJHL. We've got to make sure, you know, we make them earn everything they get. A puck management will be a key, obviously, but and discipline within that. And uh, but we're going to play the way we play, uh, and just get ourselves ready to be the best that we can be. We don't want to give them any time and space. That's what they love to play. They like to play the pond hockey style. Uh, if you give them time, they're, they're going to make you pay. They're skilled hockey players, so we want to limit their offense by uh, taking time and space away from them. Game one goes Thursday night in Bonneville at seven o'clock. In Bonneville, Clayton Brown, New Cap Sports. The Bantam AA Minor Hockey Provincials kick off this Thursday, much to delight to our production staff, with teams across the province vying for a Bantam title. The Lloydminster Blazers held their final practice last night before opening up the tournament on Thursday afternoon against the KC Voyagers from Edmonton. After a heartbreaking loss to the Leduc Roughnecks in league play over the weekend, the Blazers will have a chance at a medal, but will face some stiff competition. We've seen Stony Plain before, um, Strathcona we've seen, but even though they're in our league, uh, we have a 32 team league, so we don't see these teams a ton. So there's some unknowns going into this, but uh, that's always part of it. The Blazers are excited to host Provincials after missing out on the title last year. 
and they're making sure it doesn't happen twice. It'll be nice to finish off um, playing Bantam at home and getting a chance to win Provincials. And we lost out last year, so it'd be a nice chance to redeem ourselves. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's kind of lucky that we're at home, though, so I don't have to drive all the way over. <laughs> Yeah, at least the kids being honest. The tournament is a round robin format with the top two teams from each pool qualifying to the medal round. The championship is set for Sunday at 3 p.m.